Hi, I'm Path. I'm the older, grumpier brother. Hi, I'm Lax. I'm the uh, younger, better looking brother. I remember it really clearly actually. Um, I think I must have been about eight and my parents had been on holiday and um, I, rem I even remember saying to my dad, can you buy me some trainers when you're away? And um, they got back from holiday, I was at school, and they already got back and I kind of came home. And in our house there was this white cupboard, I remember it so clearly, and I was in my parents' room. My dad kind of reached up to this top cupboard and like brought down these shoes. And I just remember going, wow. Um, there were a pair of Air Max big windows um, I spent an age looking for them actually, um, I finally found out they were called um, Air Max BWs, VTs, and they were marina and jade colours. Um, and from there I just kind of had a thing for shoes. I wouldn't say it was an obvious thing, but I, just, I, I will never forget that image is still crystal clear in my mind. When I first saw those Air Maxes, I was like, yeah, I like shoes. I don't have as good a story as that unfortunately. Um, I started collecting shoes pretty much after I got a job. Um, I don't know how young kids do it these days, buying trainers when they're young, but uh, as soon as I started getting a job and saw my brother who had collected trainers for quite a long period of time, um, I got into shoes and just started from there really. Why do I purchase trainers? It's, um, it's a bit of a difficult question, I guess in some ways, but generally I think Shoes and trainers are my way of kind of expressing myself. I'm pretty, I don't wear the most outrageous clothes. You, more often than not, you see me wearing black, gray, or blue. Occasionally some variations, but generally I don't wear too many colorful things in terms of clothes. So shoes were my way of expressing myself. And I've always, I just, I just find myself attracted to not, I don't have a particular color or a style that I like in terms of shoes. I have quite a varied kind of collection. I just see something and it catches my eye and I kind of go that way. I wouldn't say, I mean, Collecting is a bit of a tricky term. I, don't, I wouldn't say I collect. I like things. Um, I like styles, and I like colours, and those are the things that kind of attract me to a shoe, as opposed to, oh, I need to have every single version of this silhouette, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I just know what I like, and that's why I kind of buy shoes. I think for me, um, a lot of my generation at the moment tends to go out and get, you know, have a few drinks and prefer to get smashed. Um, for me, it's something that I. I prefer to have something that's tangible and something that I can actually look at and say, you know, I've spent my I've earned my money and I've spent it on something that I actually like. Um, it's just something that I enjoy and fashion is probably something that I I quite enjoy and you know look into and um, yeah, I, it's just something that I like to spend my money on. I'm going to start with this one. Um, as you can see. They were absolutely knackered. They are from 2005. These are the Hazelnut Atom Air Max 1s. Um, the thing about my shoes, a lot of the ones I buy are attached to memories. And it's no different with this shoe. Uh, me and one of my really close mates, Chris, I went to university with, um, went out one night on a Friday night and he lived in Camden. So we ended up staying there. Slight separate story, we ended up bumping into Amy Winehouse that same night. Um, but I remember walking into uh, the office, which is on Camden High Street, just to look at some trainers. And there was this absolutely beautiful girl working there. And I was like, right, I need to speak to her. What can I do? Maybe, maybe I'll buy some shoes. So I bought these shoes and um, I absolutely destroyed them. Um, I keep them just as a memory of that really good night I had with my mate Chris, but also because they're such lovely shoes, but they are completely unwearable. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that sole is completely uh, gone. Um, but I just keep it as a memory and I love it. And I sometimes I just, I still put them on just to have a look at them. Uh, Maybe I can use this opportunity as a plea. Anyone got these in a size 8.5 or a 9, uh, I would absolutely love to grab another pair of these. So that's one of my favourite pairs. Three pairs is pretty tough for me. Um, anyone who actually knows me knows that I've got a pretty varied approach and like lots of different brands and I have an appreciation for them. So number one is the uh, Zenith Lace Collab. Um, something we picked up fairly recently. Um, Anything with a gum sole for me is is a winner. So um, this particular model um, was an unknown to me and I picked it up, I think it was 80 quid. It's now hit the sales. Um, for me, it's just a, it's just a beautiful shoe. Um, I'm a sucker for burgundy. 
um, and I think Lace have done a really good job on this. So, yeah. Uh, my next pair, I'm going to show you. Um, they're uh, Nike undefeated dunks. Um, I remember when I first saw these. I just the colours. You can see these. These, these are have been well worn. But it kind of adds to the story a bit. There's some of the best shoes, it's probably one of the best shoes I own in terms of the way it's been made and the quality. And the colours are just nuts. You just don't think it will work, but it does. Um, I actually managed at Crepe City a couple of while ago to um, pick up a double of these, which I got here. I actually wore them to uh, the Crepe City barbecue. The, le the leather's cracking, which is not surprising given they're 10 years old and been in a box. Um, but yeah, I just, remember, I, I just remember looking at it and going, wow, I just love the colours they use. Um, and the quality of the leather is really, really nice. The other thing I like about this is I wear them and a lot of people ask me about them. They, they, they're, very, they're quite distinctive. Like, where'd you get them from? Where can I buy them? And I just, I quite like that. It's nice that people kind of notice your shoes and kind of go, oh, those look quite cool. Um, so yeah, that's another one of my favorite pairs, the Undefeated Dunks. Uh, second pair for me is the Inner the Wovens. Um, this is something that I've picked up again recently. Uh, I saw this in a filtered image and it looked amazing on foot. Um, it's a model that you don't really see that often um, and I just thought it was really different. I love the colour, um, the work that's gone into it is, is phenomenal. Um, I'm not really a fan of the free sole either but on this I think it works with all the little details. There's 3M on the back there um, and on foot it looks, it looks good in my opinion so um, yeah very very nice pair. My final pair. Um... It's quite, it's quite difficult actually, um, but I've gone for these, again because they're a bit unique. Um, Vandals from the 2013, I think, Area 72 pack. I just like it, they're just different. I like the pattern, you can feel it. Um, I like the fact that Nike are pushing the boundary a little bit with um, the materials they choose. I love the little alien on the tongue. And again, it's just a shoe that you can, walk, you can wear it with quite a lot of things actually, but it's just a bit different. You don't see many people. I've never seen anyone wearing it, like, even even talking about them. Um, and I, I just I just quite like it. It's it's a shoe I'm not overly protective of. I like to wear it, as you can probably just about tell. It's been worn well. Um, but yeah, I just like the way it looks, and it's they're really comfortable as well. So if I'm going anywhere, which means on my feet for a while, then um, these are the ones I probably go for. But my top three changes a lot. So this is what I was feeling at the moment. Uh, my third pair is the uh, Foot Patrol Gel, gel Sagas. Um, I don't know anyone who doesn't like these. Um, I think they're beautiful. Um, Foot Patrol always do a good job on um, on any silhouette in my opinion. And the Gum Sole, again, I, like I said, I'm a sucker for them. Um, brilliant pair. Um, and there's not much more to say about, about it, really. Um, it's just a lovely pair with the, the cream laces. I think it sets it off well. So. Some guy did us a big favour on that, his name was Tom Ray, he managed to sort them out for us. Very kind of him. Yeah. So, I would rock this. Um, I love this pair. Um, just amazing materials um, and just a great shoe. So yeah, this would be my uh, pair to rock even though it's slowly disintegrating. So. Uh, I love the Patrol, uh, it has a special place in my heart uh, as a shop really kind of pushed it for me so there's there's only one answer here these are the ones I'm gonna rock um, and it just so happens I absolutely love them um, it was really hard not to put them in my uh, top three in fact mostly because he took one of he took it for his spot so uh, that, that's the pair I'd rock um, for me I've got a bit of a cop-out answer here but the one to burn is the hazelnut AM ones they're absolutely destroyed um, and I I've, I wore, the last time I wore these, I was slipping all over the place because, as, as my brother mentioned, uh, there's no grip on it, so definitely burn these. Yeah. Um, for me, um, whilst it's a, a really nice shoe, um, I would probably burn these. Um, I really like them, I think they're a good silhouette, um, but given the choices, these are the ones that would be burned. Uh, and the ones to give away is, uh, are these. Um, Ever since we've got these, I've never actually worn them. Um, for me, they're just too leery, uh, and I'd rather see someone else wearing them than, than me myself. So, uh, yeah, definitely give these away. Uh, so, as, as we've got left, uh, the Innova Wovens would be the one uh, I'd give away. It's a fabulous shoe, genuinely. I mean, 
if you guys have never seen a pair up close, you should, you should go and take a look because all the little detailing is just lovely. So being able to give this to someone uh, to wear would um, not only make them happy, probably make me quite happy as well because it's a fabulous shoe. Uh, if there was a fire, um, the shoe I'd save um, are these. Um, I didn't put them in my top three because my top three kind of changed a lot, but this shoe is a bit more special to me. Um, I, I wear them. This is actually my double. Um, I've got a, a properly used pair somewhere else. Um, but Foot Patrol is very special to me because it was the first time I really kind of got an understanding of what trainers and what collaborations were about. When I was kind of starting in trains, I just bought trainers I liked. I didn't really have too much understanding of collaborations that happened, all the various shops around the world, etc., etc. Um, but I remember walking into Foot Patrol, and this was at their old location. So they're now they're on Berwick Street. They used to be in a place called St Anne's Court. And I, re I really remember. I remember the shop really clearly. So walking in and seeing these, because these, these have come out after Foot Patrol had, had done a collaboration with Nike on the stabs. And I remember seeing them and going, wow, I just love them. There's something about them. I, I can't, I can't the, these colors aren't colors I'd normally associate with myself, but there's just something, it's just the way it works. The material is incredible. Like it's, they're so comfortable and they just look really nice. Um, I, I remember that day I, I thought, should I buy two pairs? Um, I didn't in the end. Um, I kind of wish I did. Um, but yeah, these, these are the ones that without hesitation or question, these are the shoes that will um, leave with me if there was a fire. Um, if there was a fire, uh, I would take these, head straight for these. Um, this is kind of a Foot Patrol themed uh, answer, but um, yeah, just a great pair. And like I've said, uh, Foot Patrol do an amazing job on most most trainers. And the Saga is probably one of my favorite models. Um, and I, I just I just love love this pair. So uh, yeah, it would be it would be these without a shadow of a doubt. I think. A pair to live in for a year would be uh, the Reebok Worker workouts. Um, easily one of the most comfiest shoes on the market, and with it being Reebok, there's not much demand for it. So um, you can pick these up for cheap Reebok website. Even I think they stopped these in. I think I've got these from JD actually for. 50 quid or so um, and you can wear them with pretty much anything I think they're just a beautiful shoe super super comfy if you haven't got one I suggest you definitely buy one of these so yeah that would be my uh, shoe to live in for a year um, if I had to choose um, it's probably going to be a, bit of a stock answer but the ultra boost um, I, I remember putting these on for the first time and I was uh, and walking around with them and I was just like wow um, it's just, they're just remarkable shoes. I think before Ultra Boost launched, a lot of people talked about Flyknit Racers. We've got, I've got a few pairs of Flyknit Racers and they're really nice and they're really comfortable, but if I had to choose um, Ultra Boost all the way, although in the rain, they probably wouldn't be ideal, given these, these are the wool ones, but I'm, as a silhouette, they're probably not ideal. But um, I actually took my other pair of Ultra Boosts on holiday, so I went to Bali and a few other places, so I spent a lot of time on the beach, rocking them, and they still, they still look practically new after everything I put them through. So. Um, Ultra Boost all the way for me. This is a bit of a difficult question for me because I, I have so many different silhouettes that I like, but I think my grill would probably be the Kiss of Death one to complete the set. Um, I think they're a great shoe, very different with the see-through sort of toe box area. Um, and I just love the use of materials on them. Um, and I just ideally like to, to complete the set, like I said. Um, so yeah, I think the, the Kiss of Death ones for me. Um, my grail is probably quite obvious, um, but the reason, and they are the mags. Um, I've got a little, little ceramic one here from the auction in London. Here's my paddle, I don't know if you can see that. Um, I went to the auction and uh, I bid for the mags. I wasn't successful, obviously, uh, but I love Back to the Future. It was kind of film for me growing up. Um, I like everything about it, so. The mags, probably a cliche choice, but a choice um, based not just on the hype, but based on what um, what the shoe means to me. Um, as I mentioned earlier, memories are quite a big part of the shoes that I buy. Uh, so yeah, if uh, I'm fortunate enough to uh, get the mags, I'll be a happy man.
My last pair purchased uh, were these. Uh, Passage El Saga. Um, me and my bros say, share similarities and um, our love for the saga um, is, is one of them. I love the saga. I think it's uh, underrated silhouette um, and I just I, I think it's uh, lovely. I've got a few of them now. I was on the hunt for these for a long time. Um, I, I've got quite an affinity with Amsterdam as a city. I've got a lot of good friends who live there. I go and visit them quite a lot. So um, this shoe has, uh, as I said, I keep, I keep saying it, memories are, are attached to a lot of the shoes I buy. Uh, so these were, um, I was looking for them for a long, long time actually. Um, and then uh, someone who's well known in the CC uh, group uh, had them. And so um, I pulled the trigger quite quickly when I found out that he did have them and he was selling them. So you know who you are, thank you very much for these. So that was my latest pick up. Uh, my latest pickup is the uh, Transit 2s. Um, these have been an elusive pair uh, for, I guess, myself and, and my brother. Um, different story to the Transit 1s, actually, um, because the, trans the, the, first, the first Saturday specials were so easy to pick up. I bought those online and you could find them for retail, you know, a couple of weeks later because no one could sell them. But this pair was remarkably difficult and uh, you know, we finally got this for a, uh, a reasonable price, and uh, yeah, just just a again, Hanon have killed this. Um, I think it's just a beautiful shoe. Uh, I quite like teal as well, so um, just a, just a great pair, and uh, yeah, that's my latest pickup. So. Anyone who's seen my collection will know that I like several different brands. So this question is remarkably difficult for me, but I think I've got to go with Nike. Um, Ever since I started um, following on with my brother, uh, I started with Nikes, um, the Foot Patrol 90s, the uh, Hazelnut Atoms, the um, Skull Pack, which are completely battered as well, along with the uh, Atoms and the foot, first pair of Foot Patrols we had. So, um, yeah, I think Nike uh, produced, you know, some of their older stuff was really nice and, uh, yeah, probably my favourite brand. Um. Probably unsurprisingly, I'm going to go with Nike as well. Um, just everything they do, not even just from their trainer point of view, the way they approach um, everything they make, uh, the whole point of view that everyone's an athlete, the way they innovate. Um, it, it wasn't as, I want to say as clear cut as my brother's, but um, Nike definitely, if not um, ASICS or ASICS, would probably be a close, close second. Just a bit different, none of my friends wear ASICS at all, quite like that, and they ask me a lot about it. But yeah, without, I mean, it's, it's Nike. I just like everything they do. Most overrated pair, this is probably going to make some people cry. Um, I think it's these. They are a lovely shoe, do not get me wrong. And I love, I love I've got a lot of time for Hanon and everything they do. But I do not think they are worth the hype that people have around them. Um, like this guy over here. Um, I think they're a lovely shoe, but I think they're massively overrated, so that's my overrated pair. Uh, going along with the same theme of Diodoros, I think the most overrated pair are the Pata Colonel Blues, which are you know, going for ridiculous money at the moment, and in my opinion, not a real nice colourway. Um, just go for too much money, and they're just not very nice in my opinion, so that's my overrated pair. Uh, moving to underrated, um, I'm going to go with the 997. I've never really been um, into New Balance um, massively. I like looking at them, but I've never really kind of um, invested in any pairs. And then uh, my bro actually picked these up and I saw them and I tried them on and I was just like, wow. Like th These shoes are amazing. And um, I actually sent a message to Mr. Lindy going... Tom, I, I think I've kind of got a bit of a bug for 997s. Um, is there anything, any info you can share with me or anything? And bless him, the guy who wrote me an essay explaining everything about 997s, going, they, they started here, this is where they did, etc., etc. And, and, you know, I don't expect anything less from Crep City, to be honest. But um, that information from Tom just almost cemented um, my newfound love for these. And if I'm being honest, I think moving forward, the shoes I'm most excited about. Um, or 997s, um, and I hope they get the love uh, that I think they deserve. Uh, my underrated pair is the uh, is the Zenith model in general, but 
in particular these. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I love teal. Um, and this I picked up for 15 quid. Um, and anyone who's got a pair of these Ennis, the, the, the suede on these are, you know, nice, very nice, uh, especially for 15 quid. Um, I know there's a couple of fans in the group, Tom Smith and Graham Watt, who love these. Um, and I'm actually looking for the French trotters. So if anyone's got a pair in a UK nine, uh, someone sort me out, please. Uh, I'll, 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 pro I'll probably say you. Uh, yeah, I'll probably say me. But it depends how you define, define hype beast. Like, I don't, you won't see me wearing Bape. I don't have any Bape clothing. Um, I like Supreme. Um, I don't know if that makes me a hype beast, but I wear Supreme more than probably my brother does. So if that's the definition, then probably. I don't, I don't, we don't, I don't have any high end kicks. I don't have any um, Yeezys um, or anything like that. But yeah, if we had to choose. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. Given my recent purchases over the last few years, you know, fifteen quid Lacocks and <laughs> and things like that. Um, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. My dream collab would probably be a Ultra Boost. Uh, you probably won't be surprised to hear. I'd like to see Foot Patrol do what they always do on all of their collabs. Uh, I think Ultra Boost is a is the new shoe that um, everyone's going to get excited about. I think rightly so. It, I love, I love them. Um, so yeah, my favourite Foot Patrol doing an Ultra Boost would be my dream collab. Uh, I know that I said earlier that Foot Patrol are probably my favourite store in London. Um, but for me, I think a collab on a Fly Net Racer would be great. Um, Hanon or 24 Galates, I think they kill all their collabs. So uh, to see a Fly Net Racer collab with uh, Hanon and 24 Galates would be, would be awesome. A pair of essentials any collection. Uh, it's a bit left field, but I'm going with uh, Converse's. Um, these are battered. Um, I've worn these quite quite a few times. I take them on holiday. Just it's just an easy wear. You can wear these. You can dress them up. You can dress them down with jeans. Um, and I think uh, yeah, anyone should have a, anyone and everyone should have at least one pair of Converse's in their collection. Uh, for me, rather unsurprisingly, probably um, the AM one. It's just. It's a solid shoe, you can wear it um, with lots of different things. Everyone, whether you're a, a sneakerhead or, or just someone who uh, needs a pair of trainers, an AM1 will never, will never go amiss. And I'd even say will never go out of fashion. Um, so yeah, for me, essential to any collection is an AM1. One thing to change in the uh, current market would probably be the number of collabs that come out. Um, just today, um, I didn't even know about the number of collabs that came out today, and you see it all over Facebook plastered. Um, well, all these, you know, all these shoes are coming out, um, and I just think there are too many. The market's being oversaturated, um, and they just need to calm down. Um, and the amount of money being spent on these things are ridiculous. So, I think um, the number of collabs needs to just reduce a little bit. For me, I. I I think the market is what it is. It's what happens, you know. I could talk about people buying trainers to sell, but that's just the nature of anything we do. I think for me, the little thing is just people. People are in Crep City or any other kind of sneaker groups is because they like shoes. Um, you know, if if someone asks a question, I think people, if they know the answer, they should give give people the answer. Sometimes you get people kind of, what you're talking about, mate. The you know you used to wear Harachis. So what if they used to wear Harachis? Like if you like Harachi, wear a shoe. I just think. You know, even I, I've probably been guilty of it in the past, but you know, I grow up, I kind of like, you know, I try now, I just like if someone asks a question, I try and be helpful. And if I think someone's being unhelpful, I'll say, look, if you've got nothing helpful to say, don't say it. Um, I remember I, when I first stumbled across Crep City, I didn't know that much about trainers, I knew a little bit, and I've learned so much from just being in the group. I think, you know, Crep City is probably an exception to the rule. People generally will always go out of their way to help people, especially the admins. Um, and, you know, and everyone else, you know, you see the same names always helping. So for me, I think there needs to be more of that. I think in, in sneak culture, in streetwear culture, people need to just be more kind of helpful of people. I think I think that's important. It is an awesome festival. It's a festival. I think festival is quite a good word to describe Crep City. Actually, it's about celebration of things that people have in common and things like things that people like. Um, 
I love going down to Cripsy just because it's nice to see people who you spend a lot of time talking to um, online and people you don't get to see because they live in different cities. Um, so yeah, Cripsy is cool. It's um, chilled out, uh, positive, friendly. Um, yeah, it's just a good day out. I really enjoy it. Uh, I think Crip City is a very good place to kind of meet like-minded people, obviously. Um, in my daily life, it's pretty difficult to kind of have conversations with my friends who have no idea about kicks and don't kind of, you know, they don't have any interest in it. Um, and I think Crip City is a great place to do it. It's a great day out. You know, the, the admins put on a great event. A lot of work goes into it and you can just, you can see that at the event. So, um, yeah, very, very good event and an enjoyable day out. It means a lot, I'm not going to lie. Um, as we've kind of both talked about like in this video is that not there are a few people in our lives that really understand our passion for shoes and trainers. So people who are in Crepsy, who can, we can talk to about stuff and um, share opinion, get thoughts. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's, it's nice to meet people who have like-minded things. Crepsy is also, I mean, Crepsy is, means is a massive part of my life, I'm not going to lie, you know, uh, I, my favourite place in the world, as m most a lot of people in Crepsy already know, is Glastonbury, so I went this year and, you know, I needed a new flag, so there was a, I, I just said to the guys, I was like, guys, it'd be quite cool if I could take a Crep City flag to uh, Glastonbury, are you alright with that? The guys were like, yeah, cool, make sure you do. So I uh, got this big Crep City flag printed out and literally took it around Glastonbury just representing, because Crep City is, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a part, of, I guess it's a part of me. And if I can represent it at my favourite place in the world, then I really, I was really excited about doing that. Basically that, yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, this is difficult. This is a lot more difficult than it looks. Oh, wow. This doesn't feel like a GL3. I think it's a... Is it a... Oh, wow. Gel light sp sp speed? What's this? I'm going to say the patter gel light speed. Oh, wow. Oh. This is plastic at the back. Ah, oh, this is. Oh, Tom, really? This is like a LeBron, I think, based on this tongue. Um, oh, I... <laughs> uh, I don't know, South Beach, I think. South Beach LeBrons. Oh, this one's uh, very difficult. No, yeah, pretty difficult. Got no idea on this one so far. Ah, oh, uh, the dunk. No idea. It doesn't feel like a dunk, I just don't know what it is. Oh, I know, I think it is a dunk. But I have no idea what shoe that is, so... Uh, I'm just going to have to go with Nike Dunk. Oh, hold on a second. This... <laughs> I think I... Uh,
This feels more like a dunk than the previous one. go with night dunk again which means one of the previous answers was wrong. It's an AM1. So, uh, what can it be though? I don't think it's one of mine. Oh, um, Atmos AM1. I don't know what else it could be. I don't know. I hope it's, oh, it's an, that's an AM1. I don't know what I don't know what it could be. I'm gonna get Atmos AM1. It's got a weight to it, this one. Oh, that doesn't feel familiar. Oh, no. Okay, it's a basketball shoe. I don't, I don't have a clue. Well, hold on. This, this is a LeBron, I think. Something LeBron, I have not. I've, uh, LeBron, LeBron, that's all I can go with. This feels interesting. It's just light. What is this? It also kind of feels like a shoe I think I have, in a weird way. So it's not, it's not a... What could this be? What's this? to help me. It's a Lecoq Sportif. Which one is it then? Leather. How's, how's Lecoq Sportif I think? That's the most confident one I've been on yet. Little triangles in the sole. So it's a GL3. What could it be? Um, okay. Don't even try to double bluff me, because I don't have that many GL3s. But you already give me a co collaboration with how. So have you given me this? It's a GL3. Um, let's go with. Um, 
Um, Path to GL3. It's a GL3, I'm sure of it. I don't know what it could be though. Hold on, hold on. No, I'm not going to get any more. I'm going to go Path to GL3.